I'm heading up a remote tributary of the Amazon to escape the impact of decades of overfishing and to find heavyweight catfish capable of dragging struggling victims to the depths. But my attempts are being thwarted by an aggressive predator hiding in the river's dark waters. Yeah. The strike feels like a piranha, but ten times the size of the ones I've caught downstream. Right, that's what's been eating my bait. That's a really big black piranha, just the size of that head. Power of those jaws. No. A piranha this size could do some serious damage. It dwarfs the red bellies I've caught before. So could a swarm of these beasts be to blame? Luckily, they're not normally found in the concentrations that you find the small red belly piranhas. And the other thing is, actually, these are very rare in the main river, so I'm pretty certain that it wasn't involved in the events of that night. It's 17 long and then 19 inch girth. And at more than six and a half pounds, this is the largest piranha I've ever caught. Ah! If my finger were in the way there, I'd be minus a finger. <laughs> Dan Duncan and his girlfriend Sonia were on a fishing trip in the outback. Aware of the danger from crocodiles, they too pitched their tent well away from the water. But on this night, distance was no protection. there all night obviously, to about three o'clock until he decided to uh, do something. Somehow Dan's girlfriend managed to avoid the crocodile's jaws and escape, leaving Dan tangled in the tent and fighting for his life. My arm was stuck with him and I was going over and he was slowly dragging me back towards the river. Luckily at the last minute he started to roll the other way and I unrolled my arm and I got out and he just slid into the river. People say you can stick your fingers in their eyes and stuff, it doesn't really work, you know. They pretty much if a croc's got you and he's dedicated, no, I don't think you're going to get away. Now, especially in that river, if he had to pull me down there, that's it. To stay safe out here, I'm going to need eyes in the back of my head. Oh, look at that, look at that, it comes about like four feet out of the water. I'm hooked into a predator in Africa's Okavango Delta. The line sounding like it's in pain, slicing the water. Could it be the Nguesh? Long and silvery, horizontal stripes. The pack hunting killer fish I've been searching for. Oh. I think this might actually be the Nguesh. From everything I've heard, it definitely fits the description. Streamlined fish, silvery color, horizontal black stripes, and unmistakable, large, sharp, interlocking teeth. And, well, I actually recognize this as a tiger fish. This definitely looks like it's been doing a bit of hunting. That body, although elongated, is quite, you know, it's very full, it's been feeding. And then those teeth, I mean, that is, yeah, that is the tooth the witch doctor showed me. I, mean, I think we've got a positive ID now on this fish, for sure. So I've matched the teeth from the witch doctor and identified the Nguesh. But is it really a fish that attacks in frenzied packs like the piranha? I've caught a tigerfish before, the Goliath tigerfish of the Congo. There we go. That fish has the size to be a killer. What a freshwater monster this thing is. But it works alone, 
the one I'm after hunts in packs and can potentially bring down several large targets at once. The type of tigerfish I just caught is a relative of the piranha, but it can grow to over three feet long, and its average weight is more than 10 times that of a red-bellied piranha. So imagine hordes of these tearing at your flesh. A voracious pack of teeth that, if my hunch is right, could easily have disposed of the ferry victims. Piranhas are an all too familiar problem when fishing the Amazon, but I have a solution. I switch to a tough plastic lure. Hopefully, I'll have more luck with this. Almost immediately, my change in tactics is rewarded. Very aggressive piranha there, taking this very noisy, large lure on the surface. It's a perfect opportunity for an experiment. Right. I'm just going to see if we can demonstrate how sharp those teeth are. This is 300 pound breaking strain Kevlar, the same material used to make bulletproof vests. Just get some in here. Eight? That's impressive. Its teeth slice effortlessly through the Kevlar. But what about woven steel? Ha! Huh. It's a sobering reminder of the flesh slicing potential of these prolific predators. On those rare occasions when piranhas do attack, it's death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> <laughs> 